Hi, Gospel Guitarist again uh, with another episode on audio equipment. Today we're going to be looking at EQ. Um, what I have on display here are two graphic equalizers. Sometimes the EQ section on a mixer is just not going to cut it. And there are trouble frequencies um, given the venue that you're, especially in live audio, you're going to find that rooms are not perfect and they extenuate um, certain frequencies and those frequencies cause feedback. So with, with these types of devices we can eliminate feedback. Now I have two of them here. Um, I don't know if Guinness Book of World Records tracks sales of units but if so I would have to say this Elisa's probably would take it. Um, this is a 31 band graphic equalizer released by Alesis that just is fabulous. It works great and it's all in one rack space um, which is really unusual to have two 31 band EQs in one space. Usually you have a double space unit for that. So this serves me well because in my live system when I need to put this in I don't have to haul around a gigantic rack. Um, and sometimes just one space can make all the difference <laughs> in weight. Um, so what you have on a 31 band here, each one of these fader controls will cut or boost a specific frequency by plus or minus 12 dB. So let's say you have um, a nasty feedback somewhere that's occurring in your room around 10k then you can just take this and kill it and it's not going to affect the surrounding frequencies all that much it will a little bit if you could picture a line being drawn between the faders just like in your mind just picture a red line connecting these so these between these three faders here you're going to have an EQ curve. It is going to affect frequencies between the 10k and the 13k like the 11 and 12 will be decreased a little bit. Um, and as you bring this up that decrease lessens so you have a smaller curve. So it's not going to only affect the 10k. There is a little bleed into adjacent frequencies. And there's generally it's cut off into one-third octave. I won't go into how they actually build these because that would be rather lengthy. But all you need to know is for graphic EQs, you notice that it's fader controlled and there's a whole bunch of frequencies, which gives you a lot of control. Um, if somebody needs clearer speech, if you have a presentation going on, a little more uh, 2K can help liven and clarify their speech. Um, you can cut out low frequency rumble on the stage or if their voice is just really bassy or you're getting a lot of um, hollowness from the chest cavity on a lapel microphone you can remove that somewhat just search out the frequency down here and then decrease it as much and try to still keep it sounding natural but you can take that out and um, other than the actual individual frequencies you also usually will have some type of gain control. On this one it's right here because when you start cutting frequencies if you have to do a lot of cutting you're going to lose signal. So what you would do is you would just increase that signal and you can punch in and out with this switch here to compare your levels where it's unaffected and then when you do affect the EQ and you can set this level accordingly. It's kind of like a makeup gain on a compressor so that if you cut too much you can put it back in. And if you're boosting your signals it's going to get louder so you can actually decrease it as well which by the way is is a really nice rule. Um, when you're using EQs adding to hear something is not always the best choice. If you, you want to cut a hole in your sound mix um, you know, if you have keyboard and guitar on stage and a singer, you might want to carve a hole with this for the singer's voice. Don't boost his voice, 
but cut out some strong guitar frequencies and get keyboard frequencies by decreasing them and that'll put your singer out front. There's all kinds of little tricks like that. But So this is the 31 band. This is one version of a graphic EQ. The other version I have here is a Behringer unit and it has less faders on it because it is a 15 band. Now I use this in, on the stage to control the um, monitor mix. That's why I have the, the highs and lows basically rolled off. Um, if I have any problem frequencies in here, I can just kill it. Um, this unit also has one added feature of a feedback indicator. So if you push a switch for your feedback, which should be right here, it'll light up. And what it'll do, these are all illuminated faders, so they all go dark. And as you start turning up the system, the ones that are going to give you feedback will start to light up. And when they light up, you can decrease them until the light goes out or dims quite appropriately. So you want to have at least a 15 band unit on your stage monitor system. Um, there's a lot of uses for, for both of these units. This is just a real quick intro on them. Um, this one has rotary knobs for your output level. And they always have meters. Well, this one has meters where this unit here just has a signal indicator and on it versus a full bar meter. Well, somewhat full bar meter on this one. <laughs> Um, Behringer units, um, they're low income, uh, low income, <laughs> low expense, okay. Uh, actually, both of these are low expense. Neither one of these are really expensive at all. Um, Behringer also makes the, the 31 band units and the uh, two um, unit, two rack space units. But here we have a 15 band graphic and a 30 band graphic. Um, you can use these in various ways. You can put the 31 band on the front of house to EQ the room, um, hopefully using it with a real-time analyzer by Rain or somebody. And um, you set these controls according to getting the lights centered on the other unit, on the Rain unit, for example. It'll have a light for each frequency, green in the middle, let's say, and then red on above and below it. So it'll actually show through a reference mic which frequencies in the room are hot. And you would use this to EQ the room. So it's a nice flat response. Um, <clears throat> so you can use this one on front of house and then run this one on, on the stage monitors. Or I could use this for what I actually did use this one for is for lapel mics. I really recommend you have a 31 band if you're running lapel microphones. Um, or headsets. Uh, you don't need it as much on the headset pieces. They're usually pretty good mics. And you don't have all the problems you have with a lapel mic. But this will solve a lot of problem and headaches when it comes to feedback on a lapel microphone, which is basically why I have this in my rack. On the back of the Alesis, you'll have your inputs and outputs with RCA and quarter inch. So you can use this for various different types of products. And on the back of your Behringer and more expensive units, you always have your XLR and quarter inch. And on the back of the Behringer, you also have um, a sub output and a, and a frequency crossover, which would um, you can dial in where you want the uh, lows to break off between your front of house mains and your front of house subwoofer. And you can patch your subwoofer in right here. I have never done that. I don't own any subwoofers yet, so don't have a need for them. But the Behringers do supply one, which is kind of cool. Saves you from buying another, another piece of rack gear. And so this is just a quick intro to what a graphic EQ looks like and what you can use it for. And you can also use these as inserts on channels on a mixer for your insert points using an insert cable. So you can that's how you would use this unit on a lapel. You could put an insert on this channel for a lapel and put this one on like a guitar channel or something. 
And so you, could, you actually have two units here. Same with this one. All the EQs have, you can use them as a left and right, or you can just use them as one and two. So lots of flexibility can be added to your system by incorporating these into your setup. So I hope that helps just a little bit. I didn't go real deep, but just what they can be used for and where to plug them in. <laughs> so till next video, I shall catch you later. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe and have a good day.